so we don't we don't forget. Hey, welcome to another segment of Hardcore Sports. So glad you joined us for another segment. We've got Jamie um, Hick Hickson on the controls. We got Jamie. We got uh, Kenny Graham, executive producer. You, you can zoom in a little bit. We got Dan the Man on the line. What's going on, Dan? Hey, what's up? All right. So yeah. Um, yeah, we're trying to we're trying to figure this out. We've been off the air for a little while, but we're back on. I look very far away, but sooner or later we'll, we'll get. I'll get a little closer. Um, before we get into any kind of sports stuff, I just want to I want to just put out there about the Trump thing. Trump was caught on tape. I'm sure not sure if people have heard about this. Trump. <laughs> it, it, this this election has got to be the most, I'm serious. I've been around for ages and I, I don't want to give my age on this thing, but you know, this has got to be the most ridiculous election that I've ever seen. No, but listen, and I don't want to get too much into politics right now because this is a sports show, but Trump, Trump was caught on tape talking about how he grabbed women's vaginas and he actually used the word he used the P word on how how he um, that women love him because he's rich, that he could get any woman that he wants. He he actually said it this way: I could get any woman that I want. I just walk up to them, kiss them, and grab their P U S S Ys. <laughs> So if you're going to elect this man, you're out of your mind. <laughs> if you're going to, after knowing this, and actually the video is on YouTube, they're playing the video every 10 minutes on CNN right now. I mean, this is like the hottest ticket. So if you haven't heard about it, um, you know, it's going to be all over the news. They're debating in two days. I'm sure Hillary's going to talk about it. It's, it's going to be a, a what you call a format. It's going to be a format where um, the, the people in the audience are going to get an opportunity to ask questions. If he's able to survive this, then, you know, more power to him. But, you know, you know, yeah. Breaking news. Breaking news live from Hardcore Sports. Donald Trump. Talk. <laughs> Donald Trump is talking about grabbing women's uh, privates. I mean, that's the best we can say. I mean, you know, this is we're we're in prime time, you know, and I think this is as far as I can go. But I've listened to the audio. You can go on YouTube. I'm not even sure if it, it's on YouTube, but I'm not sure if you can because it's just was recently put on. I'm not sure if you can go into the search and you can find it. Somebody put the link on Facebook and on Twitter. That's how I was able to get it. I mean, you could go to my Twitter because I, I retweeted it and all that. DJ Mills, that's D-E-E-J-A-Y-M-I-L-L-Z uh, at, at Twitter or Hardcore Sports 2 at Twitter. And you can, if you have any questions, I mean, we got a bigger audience than Saturday. <laughs> I know this from doing this, these shows in the past at this time, I know a lot of people are watching right now. I mean, more people than usually. We used to be on Saturday mornings. We were on in prime time now. A lot of people are home from work. Um, they're sitting around, flicking channels, and here we are, um, hardcore sports. So moving right along, we've got Dan the Man on the line, and um, Dan, is, Dan, Dan is a net fan. And I'm a Knicks fan, and basketball season starts. We'll get to the Mets in a moment, but um, Jer uh, Carmelo Anthony said recently, uh, he actually said today, he was quoted saying that Jeremy Lin is the face of the franchise, Dan. Jeremy Lin is the franchise, uh, the face of the franchise. What do you think about that statement, Dan? Uh, he, he's right. I mean... You know, the, the Nets are heading in a in a different type of direction. You know, basically they're trying to um, develop a lot of the young players, and 
you know, they trying to build a different type of culture. And uh, and uh, Jeremy Lin is, I guess, the, you know, he's the first piece. And to really be honest with you, Jeremy Lin has been looking for a team ever since he left the Knicks. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, him and Carmelo Anthony at the time didn't get along because, you know, Lin was getting – you know, he was getting the headlines, and here you have a superstar playing Camilla Anthony, and I know he didn't really dig that. So, you know, the the, the, um, the Knicks let him go. He went to Houston, you know, and, you know, unfortunately, James Harden was the man over there. Then he went to L.A., you know, and they had issues over there. He went to the Hornets, had a reprieve, backed up um, – Kimber Walker, so he needed a he really needed a team. You know, he played well in the in the playoffs. If people watch Lynn in the playoffs, but he needed a team, and this was this is a perfect um, place for him. He he gets reunited with Kenny Atkinson, who was the assistant one of the assistant coaches with um, D'Antoni when he you know played for the Knicks. So he's going to be the actually run the show and. Be the leader because the Nets haven't had a guy that really took the lead, you know, since they've been in Brooklyn. I mean, they had Pierce and Garnett, but they, you know, they were brought in to to help build leadership on the team, and they haven't had any identity or no leadership. So now this is Lynn's team. Uh, not a disrespect to Brooke Lopez, and I guess. Looking at it, I don't know if Brooke Lopez is going to be with the Nets uh, for the whole entire season. They might trade Brooke Lopez because he's the last real piece that's left. But, you know, he's not a leader either. So this is Lynn's team. And, um, I, you know, I, I, I like it. You know, I, I accept, accept it. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm looking at the lineup. And, you know, I mean – I've, I've, I've been hearing, like, when you listen to sports radio, they're going to give you the worst, you know, to give you the worst news. I mean, the the New York press is so hard on, on the players and the teams here. And, you know, it's a lot of criticism to go around. But I was looking at the um the Nets roster. It's not, you know, it's, it's not that bad. I mean, there's, got, there's names that you can recognize. I mean, I mean you have li- literally Jeremy Lin. Who's the, who's the who's the point guard, and you know he he came back to New York. He's not with the Knicks, but he's back in New York. So you're gonna get a lot of people who are Lynn fans who are gonna flock over there to see him. And um and listen, the Barclays Center is a fantastic place to watch basketball. I mean, I've I've been over there. It's a it's a fantastic to, to even even to see concerts there. The sound system, you can tell that Jay-Z and Beyonce, more so Jay-Z, had an influence in building the Barclays Center because the place is set up for really concerts. I mean, the seats are like sitting in, in your, in your uh, sofa at home, and um, it's, 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 it's the newest stadium that's out there, and then the sound system is incredible. It's like listening to Beats headphones or whatever headphones you like. You're just sitting there, and they're, they're playing hip-hop music. And look, when I went to the Nets game, they have, like, one of the hot 97 DJs, like, in between. Like, while they're doing warm-ups, they're scratching Biggie Smalls. They play a lot of Biggie Smalls because it's Brooklyn. So they're playing a lot of Biggie Smalls records and stuff like it, and hip hop songs and stuff like that. So, and um, when you walk in, the DJ's right there. You can see him; he's in full view of everybody, and it's playing on this fantastic sound system, like you would hear in a, in a nightclub. I mean, it it really sounds good in there. I mean, it's no echo. It's like in a, you're almost like in a recording studio inside the Barclays Center. It's fantastic, but. I was looking at the lineup. I was looking at the lineup. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't look too bad. I mean. I mean, you have Lopez. You have Brook Lopez. You got Randy Foy. I mean, you guys got. You, you know, you guys got Randy Hollis Jefferson. Um, uh, Lewis Scola. I didn't even know that the Nets had all of these guys on the team. Um, well, you know, it's weird. Many. Uh uh, ESPN, uh, CBS Sportsline, and all these 
uh, sites, they said the Nets have the third worst roster in the NBA. Even though you you might <laughs> say that you know it's not a bad roster, they said this is one of the worst rosters in the NBA. Well, I, listen, I beg to differ, and you know what? I mean, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, they might be just. Well, I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. We'll see. They have to play the games. And they you guys still have Bogdanovich. I mean, you guys got to – my my thing is I think that you got a pretty good starting lineup. The only thing about the, the – well, in the NBA it's just changed a lot. Um, you're going to need a bench. And if you guys could get a few guys in, a, just, in this rotation to, you know, produce – I think you guys got something here. I think the Nets could. I think the Nets could be something. The Nets could be in the playoff hunt this year, if everything goes well. <laughs> Jamie really? saying, Jamie saying, no, no, no. I can hear him in the background. He's <laughs> well. Listen, we we've got we've got to give. We, we're in New York, and we have to give the Brooklyn fans some hope. I mean, let's see how it plays out. I mean, I'm, I'm. Not, listen, I'm not gonna give, I'm not gonna give them the death penalty here, and I'm not gonna say they're the third worst team. I, I think they have, a, they have a legitimate. I'm not saying they're gonna win a title, but they're gonna be competitive. You have Brooke Lopez and you got Jeremy Lin, you know, you know. So those are, the, those well, are gonna be the main fixtures of it, and then these other role players just have to do their thing. But well, uh, tomorrow night the Knicks. And the Nets. The Nets go to the Garden to play the Knicks in the preseason game. Uh, well, we can tell by um, that game right there. You know, the, see what see what happens. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I'm. Yeah, that's another thing too. And I, and I was leading into that too because I was going to talk about the Knicks too. But the, yeah, Dan is right. Tomorrow at seven thirty, you have a preseason game against the Knicks. Yeah, well, I you can't really judge from these preseason games. I will not put a lot any stock in any of these preseason games well because number one it's it's going to take it's going to take these guys um they're actually playing less preseason game preseason games than they have and in the case of the Knicks and the Nets it's going to take them 20 30 games just to get to know each other you have brand new players coming to, and you have the, when, when you have two or three players coming to a team it's easier, but when you have a whole shift of the roster, the way the Nets have had and the way the Knicks have had, I think the Knicks have added like nine new players or something like that to their team. So I'm not looking for the the Knicks to be good out the gate, even though they have some good players. Um, and and that's the thing when the Nets get going, when they get their when they get their nucleus going, let's see what happens. I mean, you, you've got some legitimate veterans on here. What they can produce is going to be another story. Louis Scola has been a has been a, a journeyman uh, veteran in this league. Randy Foy is another one who's been a journeyman uh, shooting guard in this league. And then you have Jeremy Lin, who's coming into his own. I mean, he, this is like his fifth or sixth year in the league. And then you got Brooke Lopez, who's been an All Star. So let's see what happens. I mean, I'm not. I'm. Re- you know, I, I'm not the type to really, like, make my prediction. I'm, I'm moving away from predictions. I'm moving away from predictions. These guys who can, who call up, who are on the radio or whoever that tells you, like, the Knicks got blown out really bad against Houston the other night. And some guy gets on the radio and says, I told you the Knicks aren't going to make the playoffs. I'm like, very nice. They play. They play. They played one preseason game, and you're gonna make your assessment based on that. And um, this guy also says they're misusing KP. He should be a center. Wait, wait, hold up. KP's a small forward. He can't guard centers. I know you want to make him a center because he's seven three, but look at. I'm glad that the people and the gods that be. Because Dirk Nowinski was tall and seven one, they didn't make him a center. He's playing 
shooting. He's a shoot. He's a small forward. Right, Dan? He's a small forward or power forward? He's a small forward. Yeah. Did, they, did we lose, Dan? No, I'm here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, D- Dirk Nowitzki's a small forward. So, um, I think, I it's my personal belief that KP could play both positions. Small forward or power forward. I don't see him as center. He's, at this point in his career... Maybe later on as he puts on weight and grows into a manly body, he's still walking around in a teenage body, even though he's 7'3". He's very mobile. So I believe, I, I to be honest with you, if you didn't have Melo here, I would definitely move KP to the three. Why not? He's a, he, he, he can shoot over any small forward. He's fast enough, and he can guard a small forward. The problem with him is, I, I'm concerned about him guarding DeAndre Jordan. He can't do it. He's even had problems, KP. There, there are times where you've had KP uh, guarding um, Carl Anthony Towns in the past, and it hasn't worked. Carl Anthony, Carl Anthony Towns, and I'm a KP, I'm a Knicks lover, but to be honest with you, Carl Anthony Towns ate KP's lunch. So those people out there who think that KP is a center, <laughs> get it out your mind. But but let, let, let me give, give you my assessment of the Knicks. Man, man, we've run out of time already. Not run out of time, but we've got about 10 minutes left here. Um, my assessment of the Knicks, with, with, if they stay healthy, they should be a playoff team. They should be a playoff team. They have Derrick Rose, who's a former MVP. He's not what he was because he got hurt, but he's still better than he's better than any shooting guard we've had. And that's been it in the last, I guess, since Marbury, which is almost 10 years ago. You know, not for nothing, Marbury was a great point guard. The Knicks, the Knicks didn't have the 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 uh, personnel to put around him. There was no other. Gar- Marbury didn't play with any other superstars. It was just Marbury. He was a great point guard without a team. Now we've had we for the, for the past few years we've had the opposite. We've had Carmelo Anthony and we've had other pieces with with subpar point guards. Now we have Derrick Rose, who's we don't know what we're going to get from him because he has been he's been unhealthy. Last year was a a pretty decent year. It wasn't his best year, but my thing is you need him I I would be happy if Derrick Rose came in and gave us what he gave the Bulls last year. 66 games, averaging 6 16 points a game, 6 to 7 assists. Um I would be happy with that. That that is my, and you you know what? That would be better than any other point guard has given the Knicks since since Marbury, to be honest with you. There have been point guards here that have been absolutely garbage. And, uh, and actually, last year was, and, and I'll say it, I said it a few times, I'll say it again. The act of point guards and the guard play last year was the worst in Knicks history. I've been watching the Knicks a long time. The Knicks point the Knicks guards last year was the worst I've ever seen. Seriously, Jose Calderon has got to be the worst point guard in Knicks history. I mean, when you look at the numbers, he averaged six points. I can't even get it out of my mouth. Where do you have a point guard that averages six points a game as your starter? So really. But yeah, I I like what the Knicks have been doing. They're not where they're not where I want them to be yet, but it's a building process. I mean, I like Noah at the center if he if he stays healthy. I mean, Noah is a defensive force. So all, if all you Knicks fans are looking for Noah to put up 25 points a game, it's not going to happen. He's a defender first. You're looking at another version, another type of guy, like a Tyson Chandler type, 
who can give you the give you a lot of other intangibles. Noah is a great passer, so he's a kind of guy that's going to block shots. He's going to rebound a lot. He's he's going to score when he needs to, but he's not a scorer. But like an average game from him is going to be like four points, eleven rebounds, three blocks, and maybe four assists. He's a great passer, Noah. So if he stays healthy, we're looking at something like that. Um, we have KP. If KP can give you a little bit better, I'm looking for him to improve every year. Um, last year, I maybe it was the point guard situation, but he didn't get a lot of plays run for him. If we can do a lot of pick and roll with Przingis and, and stuff like that, um, Make him move around the basket more because they really didn't run much for KP. They didn't run a lot of plays for him. So uh, I'm looking for with this new point guard, and they have also um, the backup point guard is uh, Branding Jennings. If he could stay healthy also, we have a good starting point guard, a good backup in Brandon Jennings. If these guys come into their own, and then um, Courtney Lee is the starting shooting guard. He's another defender. So if you guys are looking for, and he's a streak shooter. So he's a type of guy, he's going to put up his points, but don't look for him to score 20 points a game. He might score 20 points in a game, but he's there for defense. The Knicks have been killed in the past with their perimeter defending around the three-point line. Courtney Lee is that guy who's going to do it. So I like what I see with Courtney Lee is starting – Derrick Rose, you have Melo, of course, who's who's getting a little older, but he was older last year, and he averaged 21 points a game last year. So we'll see what happens. I think we've got something going on here. We've got um, – and then we have we have Billy uh, – hurt. it says Willie, but I hear that it's supposed to be it's, – it's, it's, it's a W, but it's, it's, in his country, they pronounce it with a B. So – his name is Billy Hernan uh, Gomez. He's the backup um, center. He played with KP overseas, and he was drafted last year, but he had one more year left overseas that he had to play with, and then he, he signed with the Knicks this summer. But he's going to be – see how good he develops. He's a, he, he might need help defensively, but he's going to be a presence on the inside. Once he gets going, he's young, he's tall, um, and um, let me see who else. So that that's it basically. I mean, you have you have a bunch of other guys. Um, you have uh, Drew Holiday's brother, Justin Holiday, who's going to be another guard. So I'm I'm liking the guard situations. I like what the Knicks have done with the guards. It's a definite upgrade to what was going on last year. The worst guard situation in the history of the Knicks. Seriously. So, yeah, Dan the man. What's going on? You, you, you agree with any of this Knicks stuff or not? Well, they they should make the playoff. They they have a roster. I watched the, um, the game uh, off of the uh, internet um, when they played Houston. You know, they – you know, it is what it is. It's preseason, but, um, you know, they had no way. It's been a different story. But um, I like what I saw with Derrick Rose because um, he, he showed a lot of explosiveness, you know, some of the explosiveness that he showed like three or four years ago. And I said, hmm, I said, you know, he, he feels good. He's healthy. Uh, I figured, why not? You know, he's playing for a contract, so you might see – uh, maybe the best of Derrick Rose. Maybe you might see. I, I, you say you accept sixteen and six. He may give you uh close to twenty points a game, or maybe twenty points a game because he looks good. I, I saw him um jump. He has a, you know, fluid hops. You know, I, I, and I'm saying that this this guy is going to be very exciting in the in the garden. But you know, having Noah, having um. Courtney Lee, you got a good backup in um, Brandon Jennings in case anything happens to Derrick Rose. You can always put uh, Jennings in the backcourt. Matter of fact, you can put Jennings as the shooting guard to come off the bench for um, 
Courtney, Courtney Lee. Lee. I mean, you have options. Yeah, and then you also with Derrick Rose, you have these guys coming out next season. Let's not forget that Chris Paul, Westbrook, um, Kyle Lowry, and there's one other guard. Oh, yeah, and Steph Curry. All three of those point guards are free agents. All of them are free agents in July 1st. So if Derrick Rose doesn't work out, one of those four will be available. So that's another thing that Derrick Rose has to do good this year because you have these other guys. And listen, Westbrook has already, <laughs> Westbrook has already been here. He's visited the Garden just a couple of weeks ago, just to let you know. He worked out with the Knicks. He took pictures with all of <laughs> It's crazy. He took, not Melo. I don't even think Melo was there, but he worked out. Maybe Melo was there, but he, he, I guess he didn't want anybody to take pictures. I don't know if he was there or not, but I saw pictures with Derrick Rose and KP and Derrick Rose with Willie Hernan Gomez and, and, and pictures with, with Derrick Rose and Courtney Lee. It, all of this stuff is on on um, each one of those guys' Instagram. So if you you know if you don't believe, but Westbrook was here. He took actually Westbrook took a picture in front of the Garden. So somebody wants to come to New York. <laughs> so and he and he he has his his, his little uh, clothing thing uh, going on. And before we go, we just want to say R.I.P. to the Met season. Um, we got about three minutes. Uh, we both in, Dan and I are big Met fans. I mean, this year, Dan Dan and I behind the scenes um, didn't have too much confidence this year as far as the Mets go. I mean, I'm a little disappointed the way it ended, but I'm glad that they make the playoffs. It's good for the team um, moving forward. So if when we, I think that we should be stronger next year. And the Mets have to. The Mets have to sign Cespedes without question. You have to give him what he wants. He is the MVP of this team. Without question. The Mets were dead in August. Cespedes came and revived them. Honestly. Cespedes gave the Mets mouth-to-mouth -mouth, mouth -mouth resuscitation. And the Mets won 27 out of their last 40 games with Cespedes. The Mets were 27 and 13 in the last, 27 of, and 13 is how they ended the season. So Cespedes was a major part of it. And you just add some power pitching to that next year, we'll be back where we need to be. So, and due to, due to attrition, which means some teams are getting older or some te teams are going to be losing players. The Knicks will be the Mets will be gaining pitching again with with a combination of Wheeler and Harvey and Syndergaard and all these other guys and Cologne. Cologne has been excellent. This guy should be a Hall of Famer. I don't, I'm, I'm I'm going a little bit too far but Cologne, he's he's one of my favorite Mets. Without question, where did they find this guy? I mean, and you know what? They make fun of this guy on the radio. He's a big guy. He's out of shape. He he shouldn't even be considered a sports figure. I saw a play where the boy, just recently in one of the recent recent games, it was a ground ball that went to first base, and the guy, the first baseman was on the ground. I forget who it was, but he just. Cologne beat the runner to get the out. So you want, can laugh all you want about Cologne is not an athlete. I want to see you do what Cologne did and, and do what he does. So, man, I'm just getting wound up, man, and it's time to go. But we, we're doing this every First Fridays. I think we're going to change the name of the show to First Fridays. <laughs> First Fridays, Hardcore Sports with Dan, um, Jamie, and DJ Mills. Thanks for watching. Hit, hit us on Twitter, and we'll, we'll be talking more on the first Friday of uh, November. All right? Peace. See you. Have a great All weekend. Right. Peace.
Peace.